Dear friends, I am again very honored to present a lecture in front of uh, in front of you, being invited in this very nice place, and contribute maybe a little bit to improve what we called the performance of uh, IVF. We just heard from from Brian the last last lecture how important is the quality of the lab in improving results. And indeed it's very important, and uh, I think that all of us, Brian, are making the best to keep a very, very sterile, very, very high level of lab in order to achieve this improvement. What I shall try actually to present in, in this lecture, it's our experience, with a quite new methodology of, of improving pregnancy by selecting actually the sperm. And uh, as you can see, the question if, if this new technique or a technique that was developed in the last 10, 12 years that is called intracytoplasmatic morphology selected sperm injection can improve the patients with repeated failure in IVF ICSI. So, I think that everybody knows that morphology was reported to affect fertilization, embryo quality, and pregnancy results in couple treated by IVF. And we already know that a different prognosis can be assigned on the basis of different normal morphology threshold, as was said, described by Kruger in 1990, in 1988, mainly that the poor prognosis we can find in patients that have poor less to 4% uh, normal sperm, and uh, good prognosis is between 5 and 14%, and normal prognosis over 14%. But despite that, for teratospermia, normal, normal sperm morphology, we thought that is crucial, but not actually in all the cases. Because according to the same authors, ICSI outcome is not absolutely related to strict morphology of the sperm used for micro-injection. And actually, Gomez described that no difference in terms of fertilization and clinical pregnancy rate have been shown when samples with poor morphology even less than 5% were used. So fertilization, embryo development, and pregnancy seem to be achievable even if normal sperm are not available at all, what we mean 100% of teratosospermia. I, I myself do not mean in a 100% of 0%, but let's say in a very, very, very low a, a percentage of normal sperm. So can we improve ICSI results? And we already know that ICSI, it's, it's a routine procedure in more of the lab. There are labs that are performing more than 80% of their cycles with ICSI when we need to perform and we need not to perform. But actually, let's take the patient that actually we need according to all, uh, all, all the, the programs pro proposed by the SRM to perform ICSI. And also in those cases, we have a very, very low or even not at all pregnancy, what we called failed ICSI or failed IVF cycle. Now, the IMSI, or Intracytoplasmatic Morphological Sperm Selection, or sperm injection, is an innovative, non-invasive method. This technique examines the sperm at magnification of 6,000 without harming the sperm and obtains optimal, optimal sperm from the jacula to perform ICSI. It's a high-power light microscopy. You can examine a single cell you can examine only motile sperm cell, and you can actually observe fine organelle morphology and choose the best sperm according to all that examinations. So what does it check? It can check the acrosome, if the acrosome is partial, is vesiculated, it's, if it's lack at all. The post acrosomal lamina, if it is vesiculated or, or, or we have it at all. The neck, if there are any disorders at the neck, mainly if they have cytoplasmatic droplet in the neck. The mitochondria, 
if it's partial mitochondria, disorganized mitochondria, if mitochondria is lacking, the tail, if the tail is cold, is broken, it's multi-tail, short tail, it's lack of sphere, and so on and so on. So if you are looking here, this is a normal ICSI, a routine ICSI magnification that is between 200 and 400. And it has been concerned the selection of a good-looking spermatozoa under a, a, a magnification, as I said, of 400 times. But look here. This is the IMSI, that the magnification is 6,000. You can see just from, from, from a quick view the difference of the, of the sperm according to the, and related to this sperm. You can see actually even the inner morphology of the sperm as I described in the previous slide. So if you are looking here again, how you are choosing the sperm by ICSI, the normal routine ICSI, and how you can choose here the sperm when have you have sperm selection. This is a normal sperm, but look at here. Here's a sperm that you can see here a vacuole, and here the sperm that you can see the abnormality of the head. So you can actually try in this kind of, of technique to choose indeed the best sperm that you can see according to the other criteria that we just described. So the study that I shall present it, that we perform in our lab, in our unit, is to evaluate how efficient is IMSI in patients with repeated IVF ICSI failure of at least three previous cycles with no viral pregnancy in those cycles or very poor sperm quality. We, this was a retrospective study. I hope that we shall be able in the future to perform a prospective randomized study. I shall mention that later, what, has, what are our problems, technical problems. Between 2009, 2012, all patients file who underwent IMSI cycle were reviewed. You can see statistical analysis was performed using the SPSS software package. We used Shapiro test to evaluate the distribution of the data. Comparison was analyzing using student t-test or man test when appropriate, and the proportion were compared using key square official, and p-value was less than 0.5 as considered significant. And those are the, our results. 42 couples were included. 53 IMC cycles versus 27 IVF cycles performed in our unit. As you can see, the demographic of the patients are quite normal. The female age, young patients with lean patients, young husbands, at least between three and six previous failed treatment. Previous failed treatment because those 27 cycles were patients that were had the previous treatment in our unit. Other patients actually we obtain or receive from other units, so we do not have all the data, so we did not include the all previous data for patients that came from other units in this study. You, you, you can see baseline FSH, baseline ALH, estradiol, progesterone, what absolutely in the normal range. Um, according to the sperm analysis, sperm analysis quality and hormonal levels in the two groups, and we had differences between the last ICSI cycle and the IMSI cycle that was performed of, of at least 19, 90 days. So you see, and every patient was controlled by itself. The concentration of the sperm, the morphology of the sperm, the motility, baseline characteristic, FSH, LH, testosterone were similar taking into consideration the last IXC cycle with the new IMC cycle in the, same, in the same patient. You can see the duration of the treatment were not significantly, not the estradiol level of the HCG administration, endometrial thickness, number of follicle, all the parameters of the female partner. But what was very interesting that on ICSI, on IMSI sperm selection, we have a normal fertilization uh, oocytes that were statistically higher than in the previous failed IVF cycle. And even what, what was even more interesting, 
We obtained the same, fertil same fertilization rate, but look here, the high grade embryo quality, what we call f best and second best quality, was statistically significant higher in the IMSI group, 53 versus 40 percent, and statistically significant lower of low grade embryos, says 47 versus 60 percent in the normal routine ICSI. <coughs> and this is very important because even more important, you can see on the, f the results, 